So one day, you find yourself with 15 extra dollars in your pocket. What do you do with it? Oh, man, isn't that the best when, like, you're doing the laundry or you grab a pair of pants and you're like, <gasps> and you pull out and it's, you know, a $20 bill or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to Sizzla. Yeah. And, 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 of course, take into account inflation, right? And it's not $15. It's, it's a couple hundred or something like that. I'm, I'm, yeah, I think I, I did the math out and it comes out to the buying power of $15 converted would be around $550 today. But it creates that ultimate adulting question. If, if you recall, <laughs> I don't know, you know, when, whenever you, if you haven't, there'll be a day when you leave your parents, you know, nest. And you're going to have to, you have to fend for yourself, figure out what you're doing. Hopefully you get a job and that money starts coming in on some level and you have to figure out, oh boy, how do I budget this money? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing of it is, when you're an adult and you're single, there's maybe more choices. But that's the unique thing about Miss Summers is she comes into this extra money, but she's not a young single lady anymore. She has more responsibilities. And that's, the, I think, the dilemma here is, am I the responsible adult or do I splurge? Mm -hmm. You learn that she's she's married, right? So 1897, I think it is, right? So housewife taking care of multiple children. Right. You, you start to realize to your point that she's got a lot of responsibilities because her first thing is like, well, OK, I could spend a couple do another dollar or two to get better quality shoes, to buy better materials for clothes or get that gown for my for my children that need it. Because now we're like, OK, what's what's my role as a housewife? Well, it's to nurture. It's to take care of. It's my job in 1897 <laughs> to, to do these sorts of things for my family to make sure that uh, we're presentable, that my kids aren't running around like a bunch of ragamuffins, if you will. <laughs> I do like how, though, that they present this, that the very first thing she does go to is that, you know, I'm going to use this money for the betterment for the whole of my family. And I'm not going to selfishly spend it on myself. How can I improve the lives of my children with this money? And I think that's very true for a lot of parents, right? They do want better for their kids than they had it. And that is that nurturistic parent, whether, you know, man or woman. Uh, you know, nowadays, I don't think that it's as restrictive as it was in 1897. But that is something that I think is very, very common that a lot of people can, you know, relate to as you come into this extra money. How can I use this for the benefit of my family? Mm -hmm. And I think we see it, it's interesting because we, we talk about how, oh, well, the neighbors have said that there were better days. Right? Like we, we rec recollect that. And Mrs. Summers herself is forgetting to eat because, oh, every minute of my day is living in the moment to prepare for, for the future with, with my family and taking care of them. So we see, I think, only Mrs. Summers in the story. Right. Like anyone else, we don't enter their mind. We don't even really get their names. Like it's really a single character story. But you have this influence on the outside of what's the responsible thing to do. What's the expectation for someone like Mrs. Summers to do? And that's where we really enter Mrs. Summers' plight of I've spent almost my entire life now dedicated to other people, learning the things that teachers have told me. To, to learn, doing the things that my husband has wanted me to do as a housewife, doing the things my children need me to do in order to make them prepared and to get the stuff done that they need to. So much of her life has been for others. Well, now we finally enter the store and see that pair of silk stockings, and we have that dilemma of when's my time almost. I think that's something that I completely understand where my life, I, all right, I'm going to go to school and get a good job you know, to make my parents proud. And then when I have a family, I'll have, you know, the means to support these children. I think that does something is very typical of a lot of times as a youth, we do live for other people or uh, older people are maybe living vicariously through us and we feel a sense of responsibility for them. And then when we finally get to the point of we start living for ourselves, we don't, we don't know what to do. We're unsure. And then on top of all of that, the economic situation of can I afford to do these things for myself and my family? And this is that dilemma that I've come to, and I'm sure many people can relate to as well, of do I deserve this? Should I splurge on myself? Should I be pampered at this point in time? And that's mm -hmm. where I think Mrs. Summers finally makes a decision of, hey, I deserve something nice too. I've sacrificed and I've done everything everybody's asked me to do. I deserve something in return. I deserve to treat myself. 
Right. And some people might think like, oh, a pair of silk stockings, like, like what's such a big deal about that? Well, I mean, you have to remember, she compared it to a tiara of diamonds, right? Like, I don't know. I don't own no tiara of diamonds. Those are pretty expensive. So to put silk stockings on the same level, something that she thinks she shouldn't invest in or can't have, right? This is her finally kind of investing into herself, which I take it as a good thing. Like, I, I don't, it sounds to me like you and I are both going to be very positive on like, oh, oh wow, she's, she's looking out for herself. That's a good thing. But it, you know, I, I didn't know how you were going to come into it, but you have to remember, there's going to be people out there of like, oh. Well, she's neglecting her family. She's she's not taking care of her kids, even though every single day it talks about how she's thinking about them first. And even how here, how it's 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 she's thinking about the children. She hasn't even eaten. There's still going to be some people that are like, oh, she's being irresponsible here. And I think this is what good literature literature does is it allows us to bring these opinions together and we're going to have a clash. We're going to have a difference of what does it mean to be a person in this world? Because at some point yourself is going to clash with others that might have different values. So I have two things to think about that. First, it comes back to that old adage that I think about, if you can't love yourself, how can you love someone else, right? If Mrs. Summers doesn't eat and she falls down and hits her head and, you know, bleeds out unconscious, you know, or some terrible thing happens to her, she can't take care of her children. So it's the idea of when you're on a plane, who gets the oxygen mask first? You or Mason? Uh... I've been told to put it on first and then help Mason, right? I'm following rules. <laughs> exactly. But you need to be able to breathe to be able to help him because if you pass out, you can't help him. So that's the same thing here with Miss Summers. She needs to be happy in order to help her children achieve the best themselves. And the second thing here is I think that the pair of stockings to some may represent a level of luxury, but those people I think are kind of misjudging Miss Summers here. I think for her it is. But if it's not to you, then why why judge her from your standards? And that's where the heavy economic piece comes in here of that $15 is changing for her to give her a boost in her personal you know, morale, but it, it may not be to someone else. And I think that uh, judging her on this too harshly is, is unfair that, you know, she is splurging a little bit on herself. Do you think that we can perhaps look at Miss Summers of saying, there's a subjective element to this because her idea of what is a dollar worth, I think shifts during the story, maybe a little bit, right? Because in the beginning, a couple bucks for those silk stockings, well, that's a big deal, right? Like I can't, I can't even imagine spending that much money myself when I, I got to take care of my kids first, right? Like that's the first dilemma. But then once we get to kind of the gloves and we start looking at, uh, do we need new shoes to get everything to match? She, she mentions that, oh, well, another dollar or two to make sure I get what I want doesn't mean anything. So it went from like a dollar or two on myself being nothing or, or everything to a dollar or two being nothing as long as I'm getting happy. It felt to me like there was a little bit of a shifting scale, right? Like that, that there wasn't some objective standard, but that she did fall into somewhat of a spiral of indulgence, perhaps. Agreed. Yes, there there is that temptation. And I think Miss Summers does, as to your point, does succumb to that temptation of wanting this something for herself. I don't think we should condemn for her for that because we all want to have nice things. We all want to feel special. We all want to feel beautiful. And I think about this in the way of when COVID hit, we just lived through this a few years ago, and we all got stimulus checks. We got our $15, right? You got that in the mail. And what did a lot of people do? They didn't put it away in savings. They may have paid some bills, but I heard story after story of people going on cruises and people going on vacations and people, you know, going out and buying brand new grills or splurging and basically spending this money to boost up the economy, but also to splurge and spoil themselves a little bit because life had felt rough. They had been trapped and now they had this little bit of excess. And so they took advantage of that. And I think that's kind of human nature. We've talked about this before. When you buy a lottery ticket, are you really... I mean, I mean, I guess you buy it because you hope that you can win, but are you really expecting to? You know the odds, right? You know the percentages. You're really actually just buying into that fantasy a lot of the mm -hmm. times, right? Because as soon as you buy that lottery ticket, oh, what would I do with this money? Oh, I could yeah. pay off this student loan. I could buy that house for my sister. You're indulging almost in an experience. And you bring up a really good point about some people bought the grill, right? Some people are buying the product because the product is something that they're going to use and it's going to make them happy. They're not buying the grill. 
they're buying the tool that allows them to cook food to have the friends over or to have that ideal uh, barbecue where you feel like you're the champion, right? The cruise, you're not buying specifically the cruise to go, well, I mean, you're kind of going to see, let's say the Mediterranean. You're really doing <laughs> it to get away from work, right? To, to mm-hmm. relax, to feel luxury, right? It's, it's why do you buy and fire certain products in your life? And I guess this is a good question for Mrs. Summers here. Why do you think she's buying these different things? What is it that she's really after, you think? Control. I think that she wants to have a sense of control in her life again. She was maybe a young, uh, attractive young lady with her whole life ahead of her and maybe a little bit of money in her pocket, and she could wear these nice clothes and feel good and do her thing. And now she may feel a little bit tied down and maybe a little bit oppressed by her husband and her family. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that this is giving her a sense of break from reality. It is getting that fantasy of going back to her younger days when things were maybe a little bit more exciting and not so mundane. Okay. That, that's kind of going to be my next question is, do you think she came from wealth before? Because... They talked about the magazines, like she was accustomed to nicer things before, like when she had those magazines and such. So I wonder, to your point, like how much of this is her reliving some of the more carefree days and such? You know, here's another way that I looked at it. I don't know if you saw this, but part of it's the times, like don't get me wrong, like in terms of like the era when, you know, you were hand, you've waited on more often. But each of these things that she bought, like the silk uh, stockings, I guess the gloves, someone was helping her, fitting her, like attending to her, almost like, you know, how princes are attended to by all these people. You know, when yeah. she went to the play, she got sat by this uh, usher and such. I noticed that when, you know, when she, the, 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 um, the diner, the, the waiter waits on her part of it's the times and how those services are delivered. But I noticed that, you know, Chopin is specifically showing a lot of things where she's helped by another person, almost like she's being waited on, that she is important. I think when when you are not accustomed to having money or other people know you don't have as much money, they can look down on you. They don't, they don't show you as much respect. This is her kind of having that lottery ticket to respect, to admiration, to the point where she can go into a fancy restaurant and she belongs there because nobody notices her. They would only notice her if she was like homeless, right? Something to look down upon when she fits in and is is being waited upon i think it i think it empowers her 100% the restaurant is what kind of lynched it for me of that this is that this is the the norm for many people why do we go out to eat i mean you can make the food to your specific liking maybe better cheaper and have the comforts of your own home than going out to eat why do you go out to eat why do you go out to dinner I think that it's that, you know, you get to dress up and there's other people and it's this kind of community feel. And I think that Miss Summers likes that. And I think that she has been accustomed to that in her younger years and doesn't have that anymore. And she does want that feeling again. She wants to relive those glory days. Mm-hmm. To, to our earlier discussion, I don't go out to eat. I mean, I do go out to like, I pick a place because I want that food. Like th- there's no denying that, but I'm going out with my family. Because I want to spend time with them. I want to talk to them, find out how their week's going and such, right? There, there's an element of there's the product you buy. That's one thing. And then there's the reason why behind it. Like, what does it bring to your life? And to, you know, our Mrs. Summers here, there's that last line where she talks about it being her poignant wish, right? That she could just stay in that car and this would be her life forever, that you could buy the lottery ticket and just imagine that perfect life that you would do if you had the opportunity, right? And uh, I think it's something that we're all, I think we should all take some time to reflect on when you buy something or invest in something. Why? There's what you're getting. And there's also the reason why you think that's going to improve your life, whether it be someone's waiting on you, it makes you feel special, which is valuable, whether it's the product and how you're going to use that product to make yourself feel better and perhaps care for your family and stuff. I don't think it's as simple as she's robbing her kids. I think to your earlier point of, you know, she, in order for her to not be perhaps bitter and worn down and defeated, which could harm her relationship with her kids, there's an element of her, like you said, needing to take care of herself first. Can I condemn her? 
maybe a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> like maybe, maybe we should <laughs> spend a little bit of money on the kids. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, this was meant to elicit a specific moment in a person who has been drained and taken from. And what is, what is it like to finally buy that lottery ticket to do what she wants for the day? And I, I think it's a great story for that. I definitely enjoy this story. I think it comes down to two things. You can invest in people or you can invest in things. And there is a delicate balance between the two. What did you guys think of this story? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the conversation and aren't sure what to add, maybe put like a, I don't know, you, you buy stuff with a purse. I, I put a little purse icon. How about that? <laughs> Or a money icon, $15. <laughs> oh, money icon. That'd probably be a little bit easier. We're going to leave a playlist of other Kate Chopin talks down below. Uh, thank you for spending time with us. My name is Benuna. Peace. Peace.